Today I have two brand new items from GLINet that I'll be unboxing and taking a look at. We have the Slate 7, which is their newest addition to their travel router line, and their Comet, which is a brand new device from them, and it is a remote KVM, kind of the new hot product these days. So you're probably thinking, Brett, you're extremely good looking, and you're probably also thinking, why are you reviewing both of these products in one video? And that's because they sent me both of them and I didn't feel like making two separate videos. So you get a two for one combo meal, don't complain. Now it's no secret that I'm a fan of GLINet products. I've used them in various videos in the past and they've always been fantastic. So I have no doubt that these both will be in that same category. So which one do we start with? What do you, what do you recommend? The, the Slate 7? All right. Let's do it. Okay, Slate 7. I legitimately have done very minimal research. I know, fantastic YouTuber. Okay, uh, Slate 7 dual band Wi-Fi 7 travel router. Uh, from the looks of it, it appears to look just like the other travel routers. Uh, the Wi-Fi 6 version and the Wi-Fi 5 version before it. Ugh! All right, in the box, we get some paper, don't care. We also get the device, fantastic. And it seems bigger, honestly. Yeah, it's definitely bigger than its uh, older siblings, which I may have one. It's pretty clear that the new Wi-Fi 7 version is a little bit bigger, but I wouldn't say it's so much bigger that it warrants it not being classified as a travel router. Still could fit in your pocket. Okay, so we have the device. What else do we get in here? USB-C to C cable, CAT6 I assume, and different plugs depending on what part of the world you reside in. Neat. Ooh, I love that, dude. Everyone should do that. These uh, foldable wall warts. I guess before I power it on, let's read off the specs here. There are none. Qualcomm quad-core processor at 1.1 gigahertz. Uh, 512 megabytes of NAND flash with one gig of DDR4 for RAM, 688 megabits per second on the 2.4 gigahertz channel, and 2,882 megabits on the 5 gigahertz channel. Um, no 6 gigahertz on a Wi-Fi 7 device. Am I reading that right? I mean, I guess if it's Wi-Fi 7, you still get like MLO and stuff, but one 2.5 gig WAN port and one 2.5 gig LAN port. Great. Uh, under 18 watt power consumption and the dimensions. Neat. Okay, um, let's just turn this on. Ooh, we have a screen. Cool, so you add a screen and automatically anything when you add a screen is like 3.6 points better. Okay, we are going to let this load. And I'm assuming if you've used one GLINet product, it's probably gonna be the same thing using its skinned open WRT OS, which I think is fantastic. They've done a really good job at simplifying it, but giving you enough features. All right, we're in. And immediately we're prompted to set a new admin password. And give it a new SSID, travel seven, travel seven fast. Uh, 160 megahertz dynamic bandwidth. I mean, we'll enable it. Okay, is this a tap to, oh, it's touch screen? What? I'm guessing this didn't work because it disconnected me because there's a new SSID. So this is gonna travel seven for now. All right, we're in. Uh-oh, <laughs> did I actually type my password wrong two times? That would be impressive, holy shit. Oh my God. Oh no. Brick, no! That's unfortunate. All right, let's try again. Okay, my smooth brain has made it back to where I should have been and we are immediately given a network guide to set up our uh, network mode. So ethernet, this is what it's detecting. That's what it suggests. Uh, or if you wanna do a repeater where it's kind of like a wireless bridge type thing or tethering through your phone. All GL iNet travel routers do this, it's a fantastic feature. But we're gonna go with the default. Um, okay, thanks. Uh, using a VPN can protect your privacy. Would you like to try it? Um, not now, thank you. And yep, uh, it looks just like all the other GLI Net products, which I am not complaining about. I love it. So yeah, uh, I've done more in-depth reviews of these travel routers in the past and their features built in here, but I guess I'll just go through some of the basics here. Uh, you can go into network, you can do multi-WAN, which is fantastic. So you can have your direct connection here 
or you could plug in your phone and tether it and have that act as a backup WAN. Pretty cool. I guess technically you can also use the other LAN port as a WAN, according to this. Uh, LAN settings, you can set your DHCP server, the addresses it uses, all that good stuff. Uh, DNS, not too much here, but uh, it does use, if I remember correctly, uh, AdGuard if you want to use that. Dynamic DNS, if you're hosting something and you wanna make sure your IP is up to date. It looks like they actually have their own DNS provider, which is pretty cool. So if you wanna just use theirs, go for it. Yeah, I mean, you have all of your basic network configuration stuff in here. Um, but the big thing with here is the multi-WAN, uh, the ad guard, and of course, VPNs. It's really cool to have this be able to be used as a VPN client and as a VPN server. So in here, they have both OpenVPN and WireGuard, which one you go with will be dependent on your use case or what you're used to. Personally, I just have better experience with OpenVPN. WireGuard's supposed to be faster, but in general, I've just had better compatibility with OpenVPN, so that's what I use. Sue me. So if you want to set up a server, just go in here, generate configuration, just like that, it's done. Uh, you can click start, and we now have a OpenVPN server running on here that we should be able to connect to from anywhere in the world. Assuming your modem is in pass-through mode or you've done your port forwarding correctly, uh, I'm not going into that. That's this is that's way beyond what this video is. Uh, but yeah, then you can just export your client configuration, which will download the file. You can actually use the DDNS domain that you set up before if you want to use that uh, to connect, which is pretty cool. Download and boom, you have your OpenVPN client configuration file that you just use in any client that you want to connect back into your uh, OpenVPN server. Awesome. And then on the opposite side, we could set up an OpenVPN client. Right here, they have an integration directly for NordVPN if that's the VPN of choice that you use. Personally, I use PIA. They use OpenVPN, so you can go in there, generate a configuration file, plop it here. I assume that's what it does. Yep, you can upload an OpenVPN file here. And just like that, it'll connect. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty freaking sweet. Just having the ability to run an OpenVPN or WireGuard uh, VPN client and server directly on here with very minimal setup. But the big thing, I guess, is uh, with this being Wi-Fi 7, surely that means it's going to be fast, fast. And like I mentioned before, it's very weird that there's no 6 gigahertz uh, channel on here. There is Emla, which is good. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and enable that. It's very interesting that it's off by default. I'm not exactly sure why that's the case, but it's it's whole, it's, it's all another SSID. So we'll do travel seven MLO. So to give this the best chance of being fast, I am gonna use MLO, which the, the basics is essentially, it combines both the 2.4 or five gigahertz and supposed to be six gigahertz channels into one so you get all the bandwidth instead of picking and choosing which one you want to be on on your client it uses all of them uh, there's more to it than that but that's the gist so actually my macbook doesn't have uh, a wi-fi 7 card in it but my phone does so i'll let you know right off the bat i hate doing videos on wi-fi strictly because it's so variable depending on your client your router you know, what your house is made out of, how many APs you have around, you know, what configuration they're in, so many things. So everyone always has something to say about your tests. I just connected to it. I'm gonna run a speed test. Okay, here we go. 700, I do have two gig internet here, so we shouldn't be limited there. I usually get better uploads, so we'll see if we're we're bottlenecked there by my actual WAN speeds. Oh, it doesn't do uploads. I mean, 768 is super fast for Wi-Fi. All right, with Google, we're getting, okay, there we go. I mean, I mean, that's pretty good, okay? You know, this isn't the holy shit speeds that people are talking about with Wi-Fi 7. I've seen well over one gig on Wi-Fi 7, but for an iPhone and a travel router, 700 uh, megabits per second is insane. I mean, if you, if, if you think that's not enough, Bro, what are you doing? What are you doing with this? It's a travel router. So take that for what it's worth. Again, I hate doing Wi-Fi videos. So yeah, I mean, I I can't complain. Like I said, I love GLINet products. 
they added a screen, very cool, Wi-Fi 7, no 6 gigahertz, really strange there. I assume if we did have the 6 gigahertz channel, we would have got better speeds, but uh, how much does this thing cost? Okay, the early bird is sold out. The pre-order is live now for $120. It looks like retail will probably be $150. So somewhere between 120, 150, that's pretty much in line with what their travel routers typically cost on release, maybe a little bit more. Yeah, uh, I think it's fair. Fair price, awesome product. Can't complain. Uh, let's move on. Like I mentioned, this has been a hot uh, product that I've seen a lot of companies come out with. Most recently, I reviewed the uh, Jet KVM, which I really like. I think they're cool, but they also pose an interesting issue for uh, security teams where people are implementing these because it gives you a direct line of access to the system that these are plugged into over the network. So it's pretty easy to sneak something like this in considering how small they are. Uh, this one's flatter than the Jet KVM, probably not quite bite size. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, so at this point, if you haven't figured out what a remote KVM does is essentially you have HDMI and uh, USB in, meaning that you connect it to a device. Uh, you get the video signal in and you get the ability to control the device via USB like mouse and keyboard. And then you connect it to the network side and power it so that you can connect through the network to this device and then uh, you can see what the uh, device you connected it to is outputting video wise and you can control it. Uh, if you want to access a device over the network, this is what you'd use. And for all you people who are saying, I just use TeamViewer, Windows RDP. Explain to me how you're gonna use that if you wanna get into the BIOS of a machine remotely. You're not, that's what this is for. And in general, they're just more reliable. Immediately I'm seeing that I don't think this is PoE powered, which I wish it was. So no screen on here, can't tell what's going on. I don't even see, okay, it has a light, an indicator light, that's good. Uh, Jet KVM had a little screen that showed you if there was video detected and it gave you the network IP address, which was an awesome feature. This obviously cannot do that. But I need to hook it up to a machine. Okay, got my mini PC right here. If you can hear the fan, I apologize from the bottom of my heart. Uh, please enter a password. Can I do this right this time? Wow, okay, it just worked straight out. And this is my PC right here. Yeah, the very, the most basic functionality of a KVM. We can access our uh, machine and we can control it. So what do we have here? Settings, video quality, I'm going lossless, baby. We're, we're wired in, we should have quality uh, or at least high bandwidth. Audio off, show local cursor. Oh, that's pretty cool. So you can see how you can see the, the cursor as it would appear on the machine, but you can turn that off, which is interesting. Uh, color mode, dark, ooh. And you can turn on two-factor authentication. I'm not showing you that. You can even orient, you can change the orientation of the monitor. That's actually pretty neat. Okay, quality settings there, toolbox. You have a clipboard, uh, some shortcut keystrokes, wake on LAN. Very cool too. I think a lot of the uh, remote KVMs are including those these features. Terminal, access the terminal of the device. Okay. So if you wanna actually get into the device and mess with it, you can. Uh, accessories, nothing. Okay, we have no accessories. Virtual media. So you have six gigabytes on disk, it looks like. That's pretty cool. Uh, you can upload files from the host and mount them. So if I take like a, one of these recordings and drag it here, okay. Oh, there it is. I, I don't know. I uh, unmount and remount and there you go. Network storage. What about apps? We have apps on here. Oh, coming soon. Unlucky. What kind of apps would you have on a KVM? Hey man, I like apps. So if they come up with something cool, cool. Uh, full screen cloud service. So this will be controversial. They give you a QR code to where if you want to connect to it through their cloud service or some kind of tunnel. I don't care what company you are. If you're connecting this to a system that you really can't allow to be hacked, I would refrain from the cloud service. Based on the comments I've gotten from you guys over the years, you guys don't trust anybody. So cloud, it's there. I won't judge you if you use it, but uh, I assume most people won't. 
uh, reboot and log out. So yeah, some status icons here on the bottom, uh, some information. So we are running at our native uh, Mac OS resolution here, our bitrate, 2.1, 2.2 megabits per second, decent 60 FPS. Uh, can I change any of that? I guess, I guess not. Uh, what else can you say? I mean, it works. It has a bunch of solid features. It is, I guess, in pre-sale, so there are more things to come, but you guys all know the rule. Uh, never buy something based on promised features. So I can only tell you as it exists right now, and it's safe to just assume that this is what it'll be like when it releases. So yeah, again, how much does this thing cost? So just the Comet itself is $70 right now, and the Comet with the ATX board uh, is $80, so just $10 more. So what they do also have is the ATX control board, which I actually do have over here. Yeah, okay. So I was a little confused because they sent this, which according to here, uh, you have a reset button, a Type-C interface to connect directly to the KVM. And then you have your uh, power button, reset button, standard connection that goes to your motherboard. And what this does is allows you to control, turn on and off the device uh, if it doesn't support Wake on LAN, or if you just don't want to use Wake on LAN, you have the actual physical connection uh, between the KVM over the network directly to this device, which connects to the motherboard. And you can do that all over the network. So for $10 more, if you have the space in your PC to use this, then I say it's a solid deal. 70 bucks, uh, can't complain. That's about the price that a lot of these new little tiny KVMs cost from a reputable brand. Uh, what do you guys think? I know this was a interesting video. Uh, I know it wasn't the most in depth, uh, both pretty solid products, I would say fairly priced. Uh, they do have their flaws on each side, but overall I think they're quality products. Let me know down in the comments if you're gonna pick any of these up. Uh, I wanna give a huge shout out to my YouTube members and my Patreons. You guys are my Wi-Fi 7 router with built-in KVM features all in one cohesive product. You guys are the best. And if you're still watching, you're 6 gigahertz. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one.